What is up guys? This is Zach from Anglers Escape and today I'm making a video on how to set up your new fishing rod for the beginner. So here I have an actually an older fishing rod but I needed to restring it. So I want to show you what to do when you pick it up. You want to get the string on there and you want to get fishing and start catching fish. So I'm going to show you a couple different rigs as well as how to get the string on here. The first thing you want to do when you have your pole is look on the side and see where it says the pound test line that you should use and how much string you should put on it. So here we should use four pound to 150 five meters a four pound test or six pound at 100 yards so we can use four to six pound test line at 150 to 100 yards or like i have some other poles and most poles like if i'm doing freshwater fishing that's kind of a light action rod this one for instance we can use six pound test line at 135 yards and eight pound test line at 120 yards so usually what I'd recommend is starting out for most poles is going to be about 8 to 12 pound monofilament line. But in today's video, I'm actually going to put on some braided line just so you can see it better for the video. So it's a little easier to show how to string this on your line. But normally I'd be taking this monofilament with usually 8 to 12 pound test line for most your average freshwater saltwater rigs. First thing you want to do is take your fishing line when you're rigging it up and go ahead and rig it through the pole. But I'm going to go ahead and rig it all the way through here. Now that we've rigged it through all the eyelids, we're going to come down here and open our bale. So this is the bale right here. What you're going to do is just pop this open. So now the bale is open. You have to be careful because if it's not open, it makes it a little harder. But now what we're going to do is tie a little fisherman's knot, which is essentially like a slip knot in a sense. But basically you can take the loose end right here and then kind of ravel it around with one finger. So now you got an opening and it has to be wide enough to fit around the bale or the actual spool. Then take your free end, work it through the big opening and now you've created this smaller opening and go right through that. Now I got a nice little slip knot that I can pull tight and I'm going to go ahead and just cinch this down around my spool. So let me grab this right here and now cinch that down, cinching down real nicely, nice and tight and I just want to cut off a little bit of this loose end. So you can take scissors or what I like to have in my tackle box is just a pair of nail clippers. And since this is a hundred pound braid, it was a little harder to cut, but I cut off most of the loose ends. And now we have our line on our spool. So now what I do is I close the bale, which is this piece right here, put the line right here, and now you're ready to start reeling in. So this is where it can get a little tricky. Monofilament has a lot of basically line memories, what they call it. So it's been spooled around here a long time. So when you start taking it off, you wanna make sure that the same way it's round around here, it rounds around your, basically your spool. If you do it the opposite way, you can get really tangled. And then after you've done about 10 reels, see how much line memory is if it's really twisting or not. So if you kind of put it down like this, you can grab the line. If it starts twisting up a whole bunch, you're reeling it the wrong way. So in this case, this is braid, it's not gonna twist much, but if this was monofilament, it was bunching up like this all over the place, a little twist after like 10 reels, then what you wanna do is turn your barrel over and now you're having the string come off the opposite way and it will be coming on the right way if it was tangling up. If it doesn't start bunching up and tangling, then you're good. If it does, then switch it over to the other side and your problem's solved. Because you just want it to come off the, basically reel a string the same way it's going onto your bale. And then go to the measurement. So like we said, it was about 100 yards of six pound monofilament for this one. And so once you have about 100 yards on, or what you can do is just kind of see when the bull gets, spool gets pretty full. So if you come over here, this is actually a little fuller than I would like it. It just filled up really quick with this. So you can see right now the line's almost flush with this rim right here. You really want it, the line to be a little bit below that rim. Because once it gets flush or over the rim, it'll start spooling off automatically. So really we probably got on a little bit too much right here. If we took a little bit off, Now we have the string significantly below the rim, and so it's probably gonna be an okay amount. Um, but again, you can always measure it out too, but sometimes it gets hard. So just make sure the string isn't over sticking out from the edge right here, and it's a little bit under this edge. You have a little lift right there. So now we have the string on, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the line. So we got enough string on our pole. So if I cut the line right here, we have our pole all rigged up. And so now what we're gonna do, I wanna show you a couple of my favorite rigs for freshwater. 
Once again, this would normally be mono, but this will help you guys see it a lot better with this thick braided line. My first rig that I really like and would highly recommend for beginners that are going fishing if they just want to catch something, whether it's catfish, bluegill, maybe even a bass or a crappie could potentially bite it, is get yourself a bobber because you want to suspend your bait. And so then I take my bobber, thread it on right here, and then right around this little lip right here. So you push down on the top of the bobber, a little wire's exposed, push down, and now your bobber's on. Then come down, I would say about two to three feet from your bobber. And you can take a little bit of split shot, which is just a little weight that you can press down onto your line. So I'm gonna take the split shot, press it down like that, and now my weight's on my line. And now I'm gonna go anywhere from six inches to a foot down, and this is where I'm gonna to wanna to tie my actual hook on. So then I have a little bit too much right here, so I'm gonna get rid of some of this line. And nail clippers work really good for mono, a little harder for braid. All right, and now what I'm gonna do for beginners, I really recommend starting out with the size one hook. This works really well for worms, and if you're ever losing your bait, it's probably because your hook size is a little too big or your bait size is too big. But you usually don't need a super big hook. So then I want to show you the fisherman's knots. So basically once I have enough line through, I'm going to start twisting my hook. And after I test twist it maybe five to seven times, I'm going to take this loose end and I'm going to put it through the hole by the eye of the hook. So here's the hole by the eye of the hook. I'm gonna pop it through there, pull it through, and now I've made a second hole right here that I'm gonna go through, and this is your fisherman's knot. So now I'm gonna pull that tight. It's pretty tight like that. And then what you can do if you want, you can clip off this little bit of extra string, and now you can rig on your worm. And so real quick, I'll show you how to put some worm on. Worms are one of the best baits. There's a reason why it's in almost every bait shop. I would say it is the best freshwater bait for the beginner. Usually I thread a little bit on, and you want most of this worm stuck pretty closely to your hook. So I'm kind of threading it on, making sure most of the worm, hooking it multiple times so it doesn't get off. And see how right now the worm really fits on nicely to that hook. There's not a whole bunch sticking out for the fish to grab. If it wants it, it's going to have to grab the hook. If you're using too big of a piece of worm, what's going to happen is it's just going to rip the worm off. Or too big of a hook, it's too easy to rip that worm off. So right here, you can see it's a small hook, small bit of worm, but you can get some nice sized catfish as well as some nice bluegill, panfish, all kinds of different species, trout with this setup right here. And so now all you do is you take this setup. So again, I have my bobber a couple feet down my little split shot just to weight down the bait. And then I have my size one hook with that little bit of worm I just rigged up. And now usually cast it out maybe 20 feet from shore or so. So you just open the bale. So if I'm gonna cast with the open face reel, what I do is I grab the string with my trigger finger so I'm grabbing the string with my trigger finger, holding it up against this. Now I can open the bale, and now the string can freely come out a second I release my finger. So when I'm going to cast, it's kind of like you're throwing a baseball almost. Right when you throw the baseball to hit maximum trajectory, you're releasing with your finger. So about right at that angle, I'm releasing my finger, the line's going out, and then I close my bale, and I just let this bait sit there. And so I wait for my bobber to bounce down, see if I get any bites. Every once in a while I wanna check it to make sure I still have bait, maybe recast it to a different location. But this is the first setup that I would use if you're a beginning fisherman, you don't know what to do. The second setup that I would use if you're trying to rig up your pole is the one right here and that's a lure. So if you don't have access to bait, there's tons of great lures out there. I'll show you some of my favorites. But right here, lures you can pretty much tie straight onto your main line. You don't need all these swivels or little weights and other hooks. You just tie your, basically your lure straight on. I really like the Rapella floating minnow, which is this guy right here. I also really like these jointed crankbaits right here. Finally, I really like the Kevin Van Dam 1.5 screw build crankbaits for bass. And then the best all around lure guys for like crappie, bass, trout, is probably an inline spinner. Panther Martin is one of my favorite or Blue Fox or South Bin. So these inline spinners are also excellent lures and you just have to tie them straight onto your main line. Super simple. And so those are the two main rigs that a lot of people will use. You can always fish on the bottom too. You can take off that bobber, add a little more weight and cast it out there and then see if you have more luck on the bottom. I usually like suspending my baits, especially for first timers. But guys, I hope this video helps you out in setting up your new rod. And as always, best of luck fishing.